stupid thing. Is she talking to me? Oh, oh, okay. Watch yourself, stranger. There's some errant magic out here. I hope you don't mind me saying so, but you look like someone who's good at cleaning up messes. I've got a big one for you. If you're up for it, I'd pay you for your time. But I need someone quick on their feet. This mess is turning into a crisis. Uh, sure, okay. What happened? I was experimenting with a spell while my mentor, Magister Eren, was away. But the magic went awry. If it doesn't get dealt with, it's going to spread beyond this area and harm a bunch of innocent people. I can't fix it on my own, so I need help. Okay, I'll help you with your little problem, but after this, you're working with me. And should you be using magic right now, after you just had an accident? You want to talk about something? Well, yeah, like how you're still alive, but maybe it's just that nine lives thing. We need to get you leveled up before you lose the other eight. Oh, hey guys, I gotta say, you have a real knack for showing up after the fight's over. Five minutes earlier would have been great. Well, anyway, I'm glad you came along. Today I'm here with my friend Amber revisiting a previous build with a new, greatly improved version. Recently I did a build that featured a set from the Infinite Archive. That inspired me to redo a build where I felt there was a lot of room for improvement. The video strays a little from the channel's goal of keeping things simple with the purpose of keeping things interesting. The build isn't for beginning players. It requires some experience as players that don't already have the main set will have to venture into the archive to grind for it. Also, this is a two-bar build which requires that players be somewhat comfortable with bar swapping. You don't need perfect light attack weaving, but a good knowledge of combat basics is needed here. The build I'm talking about is called Monolith, and now I've gone and given away the primary set used in the build. Nobody anywhere is listing this as a top DPS set, but I think it's a lot better than it gets credit for. The set works pretty darn well, and it's a great set for players that want to play a sorcerer that's surrounded by lightning and wind. This build, more than any other I've ever done, brings a fantasy of playing a character that's a living storm to life. Alright, that's enough introductory stuff. Let's get into today's build, Monolith. All right, but can we do it best? Wow, these companions. Looking at the character sheet, you can see that my sorcerer is a Dark Elf, and he has been for years. Dark Elf is a top stamina DPS race. They have bonuses to weapon and spell damage and max magicka and stamina. Actually, they're equally good whether they're specced into magicka or stamina. I'll put up the racial tier list for anybody that's interested in that, but I'd advise you to play the race you're most interested in. That will keep you playing the game. I'm using the Thief Mundus Stone because my builds are primarily intended for the four player dungeons. I could use the Lover to get more penetration, but I think that stat is best when someone else in the group, typically the tank, is supplying it. My buff food in most of this video is Dubious Camoran Throne, and that increases my health, stamina, and stamina recovery. A more expensive and slightly better option is Arteum Takeaway Broth, but if I'm being honest, I almost never use that. I have all 64 points in stamina. If you're making a damage dealer character, it's going to be all in on stamina or magicka. Don't split between stamina and magicka, thinking you're going to make a hybrid character. It's not necessary especially now that pretty much every character is a hybrid. My health is at 21,000 and stamina is at 33,000. I'd advise always having your health over 20,000 and that's coming from someone that typically doesn't mind running light on health. Go with the amount of health you're comfortable with. Use whatever food or armor glyphs you need. Stamina recovery is at 1,500 and that works out pretty well. Weapon damage is at 5,000 and critical chance is at 31%. I should point out that these are unbuffed values. When I drink a potion of weapon power, those go up. Level the alchemy skill line right away if you're new to the game. You've got to have it. And that pretty much applies to all the crafting skill lines. I don't think you can be successful at the game unless you level them. Penetration is low, but I don't need to fiddle with that number except in three cases. If this was a build for PvP, I'd need a lot more than that. If I'm in a bleeding edge trials group, I need to adjust that number to a specific value. 
If I'll only ever play this game alone and never group, I can add in more penetration. When none of those apply, I can leave that number alone. Penetration is best when someone else is providing it. And remember to please support your local tank. There you go, back from the dead again. Am I in trouble? Sorry, I just always assume. No, of course not, but I can't say that dying is a great combat move. How many lives do you have left, seven? At this rate, you'll never make it off the high aisle. We've gotta toughen you up. Maybe now is a good time to look at my skills. Let's start on my two-handed bar. If it's going to be a serious fight, I'll use my ultimate first, and that ultimate is power overload. Power Overload turns my light attacks into lightning bolts until my ultimate runs out or I switch it off. Also, it's a surefire way to proc the Monolith of Storm set. While Overload is in use, it's easy to get Monolith of Storms to generate three electrical pikes, which is the maximum. These electrified posts fry any enemies near or in between them. Aside from that, Overload is an extremely damaging ultimate, and to be fair, I did my demo fight with my bar only half full. I like to save this ultimate for difficult boss fights. While it's very high damage is great, power overload has a downside in that it can be difficult to weave. Frankly, it makes light attack weaving downright clunky. But as someone that never has had great light attack weaving, I feel right at home with that. Once overload is running, I'll go ahead with my next attack, and that's Hurricane. This bread and butter Stam Sork ability increases my armor and does damage to enemies around me that increases over time. Now I use the Sorcerer's skill, Liquid Lightning, to place a violent lightning storm at the feet of my enemies. This ability is from the Storm Calling skill line and like Overload, it can proc Monolith of Storms. Next I use the two-handed skill, Stampede, which closes any gap between me and my enemy and leaves a powerful AoE on the ground. The last skill I use on this bar is Razor Caltrops, and that's a PvP skill, so you need to go to Cyrodiil to unlock it. This ground-based damage over time skill also reduces the armor of enemies by 5,000 points. The last skill on this bar is my heal, Resolving Vigor. This PvP skill is a great heal for stamina-based builds, so go to Cyrodiil or do the PvP tutorial to unlock it. Alright, that finishes up my two-handed bar. Let's swap to the other bar, which is Dual Wield. The first skill I use is Deadly Cloak from the Dual Wield skill line. This skill does great area damage, plus decreases the damage I take from area attacks by 20%. So with this skill in Hurricane, my character has become a whirlwind of destruction. Now I'll use the Fighter's Guild skill, Barb Trap, and I put this down right at the feet of my enemy. Barb Trap increases my critical damage and does bleed damage over time. Plus, I get a 3% boost to weapon damage just for having it slotted. Now I use the Scribe skill, Magic Knight, which does instant magic damage and increases the damage of my dual wheel attacks for the next 6 seconds. I also get Minor Berserk from this skill, increasing my damage by 5%. Now I start using the dual wheel skill, Rapid Strikes. Rapid Strikes damages a single enemy with 4 consecutive attacks, and I'll use that 10 times. Either before or after I use Rapid Strikes, though, I might use Bound Armaments. Bound Armaments is a sorcerer skill that causes light attacks to generate a spectral dagger which floats over my head. When I have four, I can fire them for massive damage, and four is the maximum. If I had awesome game skills, I would use this attack every time I had four daggers. Instead, I'll use this more selectively either before or after Rapid Strikes, or both, and I'll reduce the number of times I use Rapid Strikes accordingly. The reason I use Bound Armaments sparingly is because it messes with my light attack weaving, especially with Overload. Anyway, the bottom line is that I try to use Bound Armaments when it's convenient in my rotation or when it's strategic, like when I want to finish off a tough ad. And that works because the reason Bound Armaments is on my bar in the first place isn't for its damage, but because it increases my stamina by 8%. That's more than a couple thousand points of stamina and is equivalent to having at least 200 more weapon damage. Last on this bar, I have the Fighter's Guild skill, Flawless Dawnbreaker, for a passive boost to weapon damage. I could use it, of course, but I'd rather not, and that saves ultimate for overload. Alright, that's the skills. Let's see them in action on one of the usual punching bag world bosses.
So even with my crappy weaving where I got hung up the first time through the rotation, the build did 55,000 points of damage per second. And that's enough to do whatever you want to do in the game. I get questions about what the builds parse on a target dummy on a fairly regular basis, so I'll just answer here. It's going to be about 65% more, and that's based on me, the average player, and I feel overly qualified to represent the average player. Some people say builds will parse twice as much on a target dummy, but that's just not true. Anyway, I'd expect the build to parse in the 90s. The reason I don't include those target dummy parses is because I don't think my audience can relate to them. Nobody you run a dungeon with is going to hit a number like those you see advertised in video thumbnails. Not even close. The numbers I give you in these short sample fights, however, are going to translate well to the dungeon experience. The builds can hit those numbers and higher in actual dungeon boss fights. At this point, I'm going to invoke the three R's. Remember those from the older videos? Readily available gear, reproducible rotations, and reachable DPS? See, I haven't forgotten. I like to give my audience a realistic target that the average player can hit. Once again, using myself to represent the average player. Sample size of one. Okay, let's move on. Hey, you lived that time. But how come that line in Magic Indrix didn't kill you? You're going to have to teach me that one. Well, hold that thought. I want to check my gear. I hate standing around and twiddling my thumbs. Any activity that I could fall asleep during is usually one I won't enjoy. Well, you could check your gear while I'm checking mine. I already ruined the surprise on my first set, so I'll start there. I have two Monolith of Storms daggers. My main hand is Nernhone with a Poison Enchantment, and my off hand is Charged with a Fire Enchantment. Monolith of Storms is a five-piece set from the Infinite Archive. Damaging enemies with a Storm Calling ability causes an electrical monolith to appear which does damage to enemies near it. Up to three monoliths can be created at any one time and they'll form a link between them which damages any enemies caught in it. It's easy to have three monoliths up in trash fights but not as easy in a single target fight. Unless I'm using Overload. When I'm running Overload I'll have three monoliths constantly. Now the Monolith of Storm set isn't going to perform quite as well as something like Pillar of Nern or Aegis Caller, but it's close enough to make me want to play it on my Sorcerer. If you tell me I can give up a thousand points of DPS but play exactly how I want, I'm giving up the thousand points. I like the sound effect of Monolith of Storms and its accompanying visual effect. I can see this being in one of my armory slots for quite a while. On my back bar I have the Perfected Maelstrom Greatsword. This got nerfed right in the middle of me working on this build, so Rapid Strikes won't do quite as much damage as it would have. But the total damage is still right there with the other builds I've been uploading, so it's not a big deal. I'm also wearing two pieces of the Storm Fist Monster set, and that got hit hard by the nerf hammer. If you have good light attack weaving and you want to run Zahn here, I won't blame you. Basically, Storm Fist lost about a third of its damage. Probably the best thing to run here is the Harpooner's Waiting Kilt if you have it. I guess I'll start running that because it doesn't mess with my theme. I had my heart set that this was going to be a no mythic build though. The last set I'm wearing is the Tried and True Deadly Strike. This set buffs the damage of dots and channeled attacks. This is especially effective when Rapid Strikes is my spammable attack. This set comes from Cyrodiil, but you can buy it from Guild Traders. My jewelry pieces are bloodthirsty with weapon damage glyphs. All my body pieces here are medium weight and the Divine's trait. The blue champion points are Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge, Raffle Strikes, and Fighting Finesse. If you're working on a PvE build and you don't know what champion points to use, pick those. You'll be right 90% of the time. I could have sworn I had a couple of gold coins in my back pocket. Pickpocketing is somewhat of a passion of mine. It warms my heart to relieve oblivious people of their possessions. Hey, wait a minute. Oh well, never mind. You earned it. Well guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the new version of Monolith. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subbed. The fashion show and fight follow right after this as usual. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.
six. You got six lives left. I may have to take you back to Aaron's tower. I don't think you're going to make it out here. <laughs>